sigma notation or summation notation. So for the series, 5 plus 11 plus 17 plus 23 plus 29 plus 35 plus 41, determine the general term in simplified form. Okay, so we want the general term. Well, first of all, what kind of series is this? Arithmetic or geometric? Arithmetic. It's arithmetic. If it's arithmetic, then what is T1? Five. If it's geometric, what would T1 be? It would still be 5, right? But you're saying it's arithmetic. What is D? 6. Okay, so D is equal to 6. What else do we need to know to get the general term? Nothing. So when we're looking for a general term, we're not filling in, right? We're not solving this for a value where we need three of them. We only need the two of them, right? Because we're going to say T sub n equals. So we're going to say T sub n equals. So we're going to fill in the T1, 5, plus n minus 1 times 6, right? We don't put a value in for n. We need the n both as a subscript to the t and as a variable. Now, we're not going to leave it like that, so what are we going to do? We're going to multiply it out, giving me what? Five. And ultimately... Negative 1 plus 6n. Yeah. Negative 1 plus 6n, but I'm going to write it as 6n minus 1, right? I just like that a lot better. Okay, putting the variable first. Using this general term, the series can also be represented as, so t sub 1, right, here's t1, is 6 times 1 minus 1. t2 is 6 times 2 minus 1. t3 is 6 times 3. 3. t4 is? 6 times 4. t5 is? 6 times 5. t6 is? 6 times 6. And t7 is? 6 times 7. Right, okay, which is 6 times 7 is 42, minus 1 is 41, right? And we want the sum of these seven terms. Another way to express the sum of seven terms, each of the forms 6n minus 1, is this. In this notation, sigma is the Greek letter sigma. It's hard to say that any other way, really. Say This symbol is the Greek letter sigma. It's an uppercase sigma, by the way. Okay, not to be confused with the lowercase. A lowercase sigma looks like this. That's a lowercase. But it's all Greek to me, so. Uh, you may have seen the sigma notation. Where have you seen it, if you've seen it? Anybody use Excel? Yeah. Okay, you ever see that symbol? No. What's it for? Summing, Summing up things, right. Coincidence? Yes. I think not. So sigma is the Greek letter sigma, and it stands for the... Hmm, the sum of... Well, let me find the actual answers now. It stands for the... Sum. Okay, just as it does in Excel. 1 is the lower limit of the summation, right? So we say we are going to start with n equals 1, right? You set n equal to 1. That's the lower limit. So lower limit. So that makes 7 the, let's call it upper limit of summation, i.e., what goes in this blank? If we begin summing with n equals 1, then we end summing. <laughs> what did you say? A base. Yeah. OK. Synonymously. Um, and 6n minus 1 is the general term of the series. Okay. We do not have to start with 1. Right? We could start with 5. You, could start, you don't have to start with the beginning of the series necessarily, right? Uh, you don't need to end with 7. You could end wherever you want. But this letter here needs to match this letter here. Because you're saying, I'm going to start off by, so here's how it works. You're saying, I'm going to start off with n equals 1, and I'm going to put that in. So we'll do it for this example. Write the series in expanded form and evaluate each term. Okay, so we say the sum of 
n starting at 1 and ending at 5 of 3 times negative 2 to the n minus 1. Okay, here's how we write it. So I'm just going to rewrite this. Sum of n equals 1 to 5, 3 times negative 2 to the n minus 1 is equal to. So we start off by putting n equals 1, and we end up with 3 times negative 2 to the 1 minus 1. Summation notation says you then add, right? So we go plus, and now we make n equal to 2. So we go 3, negative 2 to the 2 minus 1. And then we make n equal to 3. 3, negative 2 to the 3 minus 1. And then we make n equal to 4. 3, negative 2 to the 4 minus 1. And then we make n equal to 5. 3, negative 2 to the 5 minus 1. So that's the expanded form of that series. Now we can evaluate each of those terms, but I'll let you copy that out. Okay, so you want to make sure you copy down. So what it says is we start with setting n equal to 1. We go in and we substitute n equals 1 into the term, right? The thing that we're summing. That which is to the right of the sigma notation. Okay, we start, we put an n equals 1 there. Then we put down a plus sign because we're adding. We're summing up a series. And then we make n equal to 2. Then we put a plus sign. We make n 3, and then 4, and then 5. Now we can evaluate each of these, right? So negative 2 to the, what is this? Zero. Negative 2 to the 0 is? Zero. 0. So this becomes 3. Negative 2 to the 1 is negative 2 times 3 is? Negative 6, so we'll write minus 6. Instead of going plus negative 6, we'll just write it as minus 6. Negative 2 squared is 9 times 3 is 27, so we go plus 27. Okay, what's next? Minus 48. Okay, so we get 3 cubed minus 8 times 3. 12. 12. 3 minus 1 is 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. Times 3 is 12. Negative 2 cubed is 24. Or sorry, is 8. Times 3 is 24. So it'll be minus 4. The negative 2 is cubed, which means it's going to be a negative 8, right? When you cube a negative, when you odd power a negative, you get a negative. Negative 2 to the fourth is positive 16. Times 3 is? 48. Plus 48. Okay. Is this an arithmetic series or a geometric series? Geometric. <laughs> and what does this series add up to? Sixty-three minus thirty. Thirty-three. You can do this any way you like. I just chose to add up all the positives and then add up all the negatives and then subtract the negatives from the positives. Or not subtract the negatives, but subtract from the positives. Determine the value. Wait, we have a question. Yes. Just says state the sum of the series, so you don't need to use any formula. You can just add these. Question one is, do I have to use the formula? The answer is no, and then the answer is yes. Because now we want to determine the value of n equals 1 to 26 of this series. So, do we want to write out all 26 terms? And then do we want to add them up? Well, some of you will, and then you'll complain about how long the test was. Oh, the test was so long. Sure, go ahead. And then you complain about how long the test was. Oh, that test was so long. So how are we going to do this, right? Well, what's T1? Three. 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 What's R? Negative two. What's, uh, what else do we need? How many terms are there? 26. 26. N is 26. What's T sub N? Who cares? What's S sub n? That's what we have to find. What formula for S sub n are we going to use? Sub 
sure. You can use that formula. But you know, if we don't tell you what's arithmetic and what's geometric, I hope you know, or you're just going to get everything wrong. So you need to know, if I give you a bunch of formulas, it just says T sub n is this, and T sub n is that, and S sub n is this, and there's like five formulas for S sub n, and you don't know that this one is for an infinite geometric series, and that this one is for an arithmetic series, then life is just not going to be a whole lot of fun on Tuesday when you write this thing, right? Because you're going to be sitting there going, uh, that's one of these, but I don't know which one. Okay, what's the formula for S sub n? You're going to get this formula? I'm going to give you the formulas, but I'm not going to tell you what they are. <coughs> okay. So, let's plug in. Now, get your calculators out and work this out, because if you're going to get the wrong answer, do it now. Do not do it on Tuesday. Basically, what? Negative, it's the negative of 2 to the 26. What's 2 to the 26? 6, 7, 1, 0, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, I 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, why isn't it negative? You got a three. You got a negative three. Three divided by negative three is negative oh. one. Yeah, that's positive, but this negative, that's why it's negative. And it's really, yeah, so two to the 26 is 67,108,864. About power of two can't end in a three, right? That's kind of obvious. But we got to subtract one. Okay, and you have, of course, the alternate form of this, right, which is uh, T1, 1 minus R to the N over 1 minus R. Right, but that'll be given to you on the formula sheet. You might want to use that. That'll give you a positive 3 down here, right, just this would become negative. Uh, what's next? For the series, i equals 3 through 8. So the variable that's used in sigma notation doesn't have to be an n, it can be any letter. Often they'll use i. This is just a throwback to the old days of Fortran where uh, variables that began with the letter i, j, k, l, m, or n were by default integers. And so you'll often see that. So i equals 3 to 8, 26 minus 5i. Write the series in expanded form and evaluate each term. Okay, so let's expand it. Wow. i equals 3 to 8, 26 minus 5i equals, okay, what's my first term? 26 minus 5 times what? What does it say? Start with i is? 3. Then what does i become? 4. Right. Grammatically, not really a great sentence. What does i become? 5. <laughs> and what's next? 6. 6. Like, okay, we're going to go down to the next line here. And then what? And then what? <coughs> okay, so we start at 3 and we go through to 8. How many terms are in this series? One, two, three, four, five, six. Huh. You start at three and you go to eight. So eight minus three is? Five. But there's not five terms. 
Because you have to count the 8 and the 3. So you could go 8 minus 3, but then what do you got to do? Add 1. Add 1, right? Because you're going from 3 through 8 inclusive. 8 minus 3 simply says the difference between those is 5. Remember, we want 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, right? Which is 6 terms. Okay. State whether the series is there. Oh, well, I guess we should figure out what this is. What's 26 minus 15? Okay, so let's say equals 11 plus 26 six. minus 20 is 6, plus 26 one. minus 25 is 1, plus... Minus 4. Yeah, do I even need to work these out? Plus... Minus 9. Plus... Minus 14. Yeah, at what point did you stop evaluating these and just go, okay, I'm just going to subtract 5? Uh, at the 1. Yeah, might as well, eh? Because once you know the pattern, so is this an arithmetic or geometric series? What is the sum of said series? <coughs> Why am I hearing two different answers? We got 17 minus uh, 13 is 4 minus 14. Is, what is it? Negative 9. I'm getting negative 10, so I don't know. What do you all get? Negative 9. Maybe I'm wrong. Really? 14 minus 1 is negative 18. 11 plus 6 plus 18. 1 plus 6 plus 1 is... I'm negative 13. Oh, negative 13. Okay, negative 9. I messed up. I thought 11 plus 6 plus 1 was 17. You said it's 18. It's not. It, it is 18. Okay, never mind. Oh, wait. Negative 9. That goes there. Yeah. Uh -huh, you screwed up. You can't do basic arithmetic. I'm like, really? I've added that up like four times now. Always gotten. Okay. Three. Three. Period. Given a series expressed in sigma notation. Write a rule to determine the number of terms in the series using the lower and upper limits of the summation. Top, we'll call that upper. Okay. Bottom, we'll call that lower. So what are we doing? Upper minus lower plus one to take into the account that we need to include both the upper and the lower, not simply the difference between the two. Right? Now, if you ever forget that, then just go, well, what's the sum of from 3 to 5? And you'll say, okay, that's 3, 4, 5. There are three of them, and so I got 5 minus all. I got to add 1, right? And, you know, kind of kick in. Hey, is what's his name here? No. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there's something going on, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's okay. Hey, guys. So you know, welcome. I hope you're watching this, and you know, because you got a test on Tuesday on this. You don't want to be learning it on Monday. Okay. For each series shown, state the number of terms in the series. Determine the first three terms. No, it says state. You don't have to determine the number of terms, right? You just state it. Determine the first three terms and determine the sum of the series. Okay, so bullet number one. How many terms in this series? 18. Okay, determine the first three terms of the series. What's the first term? So let's go 2 to the 6 plus 2 to the 7th plus 2 to the 8th. That would be the determined part, right? I'm showing work. Yes? Why did you plus 1? OMG. Z-O-M-G. Come on, you all know what Zong is, right? Yes. It's like you're typing OMG and you act as Z because it happens to be down in the neighborhood there, right? What? No. Okay, what is it then? So why, why the Z? 
Okay, having gone through the origin of ZOMG and Pwn, which now I've learned a little something because I didn't realize I went back to World of Warcraft. And, okay. No World of Warcraft, it's just World of Warcraft. Shh. They're writing a test next door. Thanks, man. No worries. Well, I have to go next door and tell them last time if they could be cool. They would pull me. Okay, so this is. 64 plus 128 plus 256. 448. <coughs> I have a question. Yeah. For the determined sum of the series, do we have to determine the 64? Oh. Plus dot, dot, dot. So we're looking at the first three terms just to give us an idea, right? What kind of series is it? What kind of series is it? No, geometric. Geometric. Okay. So then, what's T1? 64. 64. What's R? What? Two. Two. Okay. What formula are we going to use? How many terms are we adding up? So what's in? 18. OMG. Yeah, really. We are starting with n is 6. We are going to n is 23, which we figured the very first thing was there are 18 terms in this series. That's why we're adding up 18 terms. It's got nothing to do with 23, except for the 23 minus 6 plus 1. Okay? The first term is 64. We're writing the first three terms. Just give us an idea. What kind of series is this? Right? Arithmetic or geometric? Then, what do I know? First term is 64. Common ratio is 2. There are 18 terms. Now we're going to write down the formula we're going to use, which is? T1. Minus 1. Okay. Now we can sub in. S18 is 64 times 2 to the 18th minus 1 over 2 minus 1. At least you don't have to do any dividing. Which is equal to some relatively large number. Leaving spaces as appropriate, right? Technically, we don't write numbers with commas in between, you know, like to separate into groups of three. We do it with the space in between. But if you do it with commas, I'm not going to take any marks off it. It's often commonly done. Uh, okay. Questions? Quiet questions. Look, they need to be quiet when you guys are writing, so we can be relatively quiet while they're writing. How many terms? Okay, yeah, let's actually, we'll just determine. So even if it says state, there's nothing wrong with determining, right? It's always good to show your work for anything, like multiple choice. Uh, show your work, because when you get it back, if you made a mistake, at least you know why you chose that, right? Like, what, what did you work out? If it's just sort of, well, you know, I don't know what I did. Okay, so there are 65 terms. What are the first three terms? 193. Nope. No. 7 times 28 minus 3 plus 7 times 29 minus 3 plus 7 times 30 minus 3. Okay, which now we can go to... Oh, wait, plus dot, dot, dot. Equals 193 plus... 200? Plus? 207. Plus? Dot, dot, dot. Okay, so generally three terms of a sequence should be enough for us to tell arithmetic, geometric, or neither. So this is arithmetic. So what's T1? What's D? What's N? Okay, and S sub N is the question mark. 
which formula are we going to use? N over 2. Really? Do you know TN? Uh, no. I don't know TN. What formula are we going to use? Uh, N minus 1 times D. Is that the whole formula? Uh, T, uh, N over 2 times T1 plus N minus 1 times D. You sure? Yeah. Want to look it up? N over 2 plus D. Yeah, it is. I'm just waiting for somebody to tell me that. 2 T1. I could change this. 2T1. <coughs> that I did on purpose. That's why I was waiting, right? Otherwise, I would have just written it out. So it's really, it, it's really T1 plus Tn, but Tn is T1 plus n minus 1 times d. So we've got the T1 plus T1 plus n minus. That's why we got the two T1s. Okay. So one of them is the T1. The other one is part of this, which gives you the T sub n. Right, which we don't know, but we'll just let it be calculated here. Okay, so what was n? 65. 2 times, what was t1? 193. Plus, what was n? 65. What was d? 7. Equals, as far as I'm concerned, you can just give me an answer at this point, right? Either right or wrong. You lose wrong, you lose half mark if it's wrong. Right? You, if you've written that out, then you're good, right? All you do is lose half mark if you get it wrong. 27,105. Okay, yes, no, maybe so. Correct? Yes. Yay. Write the series in sigma notation. Huh. So I guess we got to figure out. A general term and how many terms and I guess that's it, right? General term and how many terms. So what's T1? Negative 10. What kind of series is this? Arithmetic. Arithmetic. Okay, what's D? 4. 4. What's N? Question mark. What's T sub? 142. Yeah, 142. Okay. So, T sub n is T1 plus n minus 1 times D. 142 is negative 10 plus n minus 1 times 4. What's your first step? Um, add, 10. add 10 to both sides. What's your next step? Divide by 4. Divide by 4. What do you get? 38. What's n? 39. Okay, so step one is we need to know how many terms are in this, right? Because that gives us our lower and upper limits. Right, because I can say start with n equals 1, but i got to know go to how much, right? So when your lower limit is 1, your upper limit is 10 or whatever, the number of terms is 10. The number of terms will just be the upper limit, right? Because you go 10 minus 1 plus 1. Okay, so when you're starting at 1, you're really just counting it. Right? You're going to start at 1 and then do 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 and 7 and 8 and 9 and 10. And hey, that's 10. Okay, so. But we need T sub n. T sub n is T1 plus n minus 1 times d. We need the general T sub n, not the T sub n, which is giving us 142. We need the general formula for this sequence. So the T sub n stays as a T sub n. This is negative 2 plus n minus 1 times 4. For the general T sub n, we only want a value for T1 and d. And then we'll get the expression. So T sub n is negative 10 plus 4n minus 4. So what's T sub n? 4n minus 14, right? Because now we're going to use that in writing the sigma notation. We're going to say you're going to start with n is 1 
and there are 39 terms, so you're going to go to 39, and the sequence, the general term, is 4n minus 14. When you plug a 1 in there, you get 4 times 1, which is 4, minus 14, which is negative 10. When you plug a 2 in there, you get 8 minus 14, which is negative 6. When you put a 3, you get 12 minus 14, which is negative 2, right? And that's generating this sequence. And lastly, if you really want to check, when you plug a 39 in there, you get 4 times 39, which is 156, minus 14, which is 142, and now you know, hey, I actually have this right. Okay, but you look at the steps we had to do, right? First of all, we had to figure out how many terms are there in the sequence, series, well, yeah, sorry, in the series, because we need that for our upper limit of the sigma notation, right? You say start at 1 and go to 39. Then you got to say, now I need the general term, so forget the 142. I need a, a, an expression for the general term, t sub n, which is 4n minus 14, and now I can write my sigma notation. Okay, and this is exactly the same as this, right? One is just a shorthand for the other. A series of 15 terms is defined by the recursive definition. T1 is 29, and T sub n is equal to T sub n minus 1 plus 12. Represent the series in sigma notation. So how should we tackle this? What's the first thing we should do, really? Let's write out the series, right? So we're going to get 29 plus, what's the next term of this? The next term, get the definition, 41. What's the next term? 53. Now, we could just say dot, dot, dot. We know it ends, but let's just say here's the series, right? It's 29 plus 41 plus 53 plus, then there's 15 of them, but we're not, I don't, do I care about the last term? Not really, okay? I know there are 15 terms, that's cool, because I'll write my sigma notation, I'll go the sum of n equals 1 to 15, okay? But now I need a general term for this, and it can't be a recursive definition general term. It has to be a t sub n general term, right? So what have we got to figure out? Well, we got to say, all right, t sub n is t1 plus n minus 1 times d. I want a general term, which means I need t sub n, I need t1 though, but the value 29. I leave this as n minus 1, and what am we multiplying by? What's the common difference? 12. I guess I should ask you first what kind of series is it, but it's arithmetic, right? Okay, and then we just we're gonna simplify this, right? So t sub n is 29 plus 12 n minus 12. So what's t sub n? 12n plus 17, so that's the sum, I'm going to use k just because I can. So k equals 1 to 15, now I don't want to write 12n plus 17, what do I want to write? 12k. Okay. Okay. Cool, right? You don't put equal signs in front of the sigma thing? No, why would you? You put equal signs afterwards. You say this is equal to 29 plus 41 plus 53, etc. No? You can, and often you will, so sure, let's do that. You don't have to, right? Because it just says, evaluate this when k is 1. It, it's not the sum of 12k and then plus 17. Okay, but yeah, you're right, okay, let's do that. Let's just put brackets around that and make life a little simpler. So we'll do this, just so you don't think it's the sum of 4n, but usually it's the expression that's there, okay? But let's, let's remove ambiguity. Determine the value of k equals 1, 2, what's this? And beyond. beyond. Test next door. It's a sideways 8. Yeah, it's an 8 on its side. It's, a, it's an eight, sleepy 8. 
or Lazy Eight. Don't they call that for brands and westerns? Like Lazy Eight or something? Because it's lying on the side. I don't know. Let's pause and go look. No. <laughs> okay, let's. Uh, Lazy Eight. Lazy Eight may refer to the infinity symbol. Ha ha. Often described as a horizontal figure eight. An aerobatic maneuver consisting of a quarter looping up, wing over left to right, half looping down, plus up, wing over right, left, quarter looping down. And in Vista Vision, it's a high resolution 35 millimeter format. But I like the, in, the infinity symbol. Never thought of that till today. So, And actually, it was triggered by your horizontal eight. Okay, determine the value of k equals 1 to infinity. What kind of series is that? It's an infinite series. So likely this is what? Infinite arithmetic or geometric? Geometric, right? Because you cannot sum an infinite arithmetic series, right? So we need something that would sum. Which means if it does have a sum, then the R value is between? Uh, one, one, negative one. one and negative one. Making the series geometric, geometric and convergent. convergent as opposed to a series that does not come to a sum, which is divergent. divergent. Good. Huh? So this is come in handy on Tuesday. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to figure out the first few terms of this series, right? Because it's, it's easier to work from actual you know, 2, 4, 8 kind of thing than it is to work from a sigma. So let's just start. So sigma k equals 1 to infinity, 6 times 1 third to the k minus 1. So it's 6 times 1 third to the 1 minus 1 plus 6 times 1 third to the 2 minus 1 plus 6 times 1 third to the 3 minus get over there, three, minus 1 plus dot dot dot. And I really do mean dot 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 this time, right? Never does end. So it's 6 plus 2 plus what? 2 thirds. Okay. Which now gives, let's extend the page. Extend that page. Okay, so what's T1? What's R? What's R? Uh, one third. One third, right? Two divided by six is one third. Uh, S sub n, that's what we want to find. What's the formula for S sub n? T1 over one minus R, right? Okay, which is equal to six over one minus one third which is 6 over 2 thirds, which is? Uh, 18 over Yeah. She was. She was doing 18 over, I wrote 9. Because it's 18 over 2, which is 9. Yes? Everybody good? Yes. OK. I don't know what you're doing. It's 9. You see a plus 1 in here somewhere? Where in this formula do you see a plus one? Don't go using other formulas. Use the correct formula. Exercises. Well, that's obviously for you to do, right? Okay, so we're done. We're done.